To my core, I'm a Texas boy. The great food, awesome people, disrespectfully hot summers, and shameless state pride, Texas is a great country to live in. But I've never had a more volatile love-hate relationship with the state like I have with California. On the surface, Cali is an oasis of creativity, temperate weather, beautiful people, romantic landscaping, and a never-ending social scene. Too bad the state is run like an ambiguously fascist combo. The California government treats the state like a playground filled with children where the kids do whatever they want, except this, 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 and this. Cali is seen as a bastion for progressive liberal thought. The only problem is, it's mandated progressive liberal thought, smothered in regulation and restrictions. The worst of which is their incomprehensible, almost comically restrictive gun laws. I have a few friends who live under the illustrious thumb of the California government. One of them being Richard Ryan, or as I like to call him, the gadget destroyer. Richard Ryan rose to YouTube stardom, using 50 cal barracks to destroy the latest tech gadgets on the market, capturing the destruction with his high-speed camera. Essentially, ballistic porn at its finest. I've always envied Ryan's high-speed footage. Watching a 50 cal bullet leave the barrel traveling close to 3,000 feet per second will always be incredible to me. Richard's operation looks pretty simple, but spend a day actually filming the shoot? You understand quickly things are more complex and expensive than most people would ever care to attempt. There's a science in this type of videography that goes beyond pushing a red button and yelling action. Let's not forget the head-pounding red tape California makes Richard have to navigate just to use the guns he uses in his videos. How often do you actually get to have conversations with people about guns and firearms? It varies. Uh, actually, the polarity is it's, it's, it's crazy because yeah. you're here at uh, gun range and you're around these people. Like, There's no doubt that Californians are very passionate about firearms. It's just the polarity between the, the two uh, opinions. Like, I'll come here and I'll pull out certain black rifles or the 50 cal or something out of my truck vault and be like, oh, cool. You know, yeah. whereas like, you know, like when I'm I'm at a house or something like that. You know, I had to be cautious because, yeah. like, the neighbors, they see you with, like, a black rifle. They're like, oh, shit's going yeah, what's down. What's he up to? You know? What's he doing? Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And I, I remember we were talking about this earlier, and you, you've, you brought up a good point. A lot of people have honestly been indoctrinated based on who they're around, who they've grown up with, or, like you said, who they've trusted. Yeah. And so it's, it's an interesting point to bring up because you can look at it from both spectrums. Absolutely, both yeah. sides. And that's, that's my thing is, like, I want to be on that other side mm -hmm. so that whenever I go, when I'm at home in Tennessee, and everyone's like, oh, you, got, you need your guns, you need your guns i'm like well oh, hold on let's let's have a conversation about because i want you to be as educated as possible and not just be blindly passionate yeah. about something you don't completely understand there's almost a certain level of dual consciousness that you have to have yeah you know because i, I tell people all the time being objective is hard yeah it's a hard thing to do and to maintain and people are like how are you so confident about what you talk about it's like because I, I i went through the painstaking process of being objective and looking at both sides mm -hmm. and this is what i came up with at least sure. for now and this is what I absolutely fundamentally believe as a result of what I found. Yeah, it will, and I think I think there's there's two sides to, to every argument, and I like to try to hear the pros and cons of both. But I mean, at the end of the day, like certain like far left opinions, I, I try to bring that home defense side into everything. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, I mean, like just coming into the range and having a good time, that's that's also fun. Yeah, and, but that's and, part of that's, that's part, of, part of the culture, and it's also part of why we're here now. So having said that, I'm, let's shoot some watermelons. <laughs> Let me know when you guys are good. You set, Dave? All right, here we go. Dude! 
It's easy to watch Richard launch rounds the size of a house at overpriced carcinogenic electronic devices and assume he was just a guy with a ballistic voyeurism fetish. On the contrary, Richard's passion for gun rights runs deeper than just recreation. And I wanted the world to see that. So we went back to his house and had a little talk. And by talk, I mean podcast. We're both on YouTube. We both have our respective audiences. And it comes with a lot of stuff that a lot of people don't realize. Like A lot of people know me from the political commentary stuff, mm -hmm. right? But for me, it started with the gun reviews. Yeah. That was my that was my thing. That's yeah. what I like. You know? We go so far back. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> back in the day when you had to set up YouTube, you had to like get the AOL connection and you had yeah. to dial up and the tone. Yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember, like, I can't remember the first time, like, I reached out to you. This is pre bar exam for yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, like, I remember, I remember <laughs> when you were like, you're like, yeah, I'm taking the bar, but then I also have this potential opportunity yep. to, like, host this thing. And, and I'm like, all right, yeah, all right, nuts. I'll see you in two years. One thing that I have noticed is it's, it's, I never thought I'd be in a position where I had to be very cognizant about what I'm communicating to the rest of the world. How so? Um, because of what I, because of what I'm doing now and being kind of upfront, I have to be very responsible about the message that I'm putting off, even when I'm not trying to communicate a message. I mean, there's the there's the there's the African American component, there's also the age component, and then there's also just the lifestyle component. Yeah, the idea that somebody like me who lives the way that I live, I live on Main Street in the heart of downtown, yeah. can't get more concrete jungle than that. Yeah, but I think people use me to see. Are they really, is it really okay for people who live like this to own these type of guns to do these things yeah. in this way and responsibly? And I have to kind of be that example, whether I want to or not. It's a constant struggle um, in, in trying to balance that uh, entertainment and news mm -hmm. side of stuff. And and so for me, I try to try to make sure I define that as much as possible that, hey, look, this is me. This is the entertainment side of yeah. what I do. This mm -hmm. is purely exhibition. But I'm mm -hmm. like, look, this isn't a game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you see me do something fun on camera. That's great. But it comes with an asterisk. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you see me blow up even it doesn't have to be a car i could blow up a coffee can and they can get you so many different things and th that will take a, take away your right to bear arms and it is like the, the just like that just like that so it, it is it is frustrating i mean i and, and again I, a lot of people say well you should move out of california again i'm, I'm not going to take it take that defeatist avid attitude i mean i'd like to work in california Tough because one, yeah. it's just it's just a great place to be yeah. so it's so easy to make a mistake yeah it's incredibly easy it's a high standard to live up to yeah but like my mother always says you made your bed now lie in it right now so that that comes full circle right so mm -hmm. this is all of the frustrations and everything that we have be it with the regulations on a state and federal level and and all this other stuff but the at, at the end of the day i don't necessarily live in fear i do this because i enjoy it and though i do have all these frustrations mm -hmm. the reason why I fight is because I believe in the right. For someone like me living in Texas pro-gun utopia, the idea that there's a huge shooting community in Cali still shocks me. What shocks me more is the idea that there are people who make an entire living based on shooting, all the while living in Cali. Taron Butler of Taron Tactical is an OG in the three-gun world. Most people know him from his appearance on Top Shot. It's not hard to see why Taron is so good at what he does. He literally lives on a range, and a pretty badass one at that. When it comes to shooting, I'm a classic jack of all trades and a master of none. I want to shoot it all, and in every shooting style. I'm an athletic shooter at heart, but I've been on a three-gun trip as of late. Part of the fun of three-gun is getting your gun set up exactly the way you want them. This Compensator by PRI, it really does cut the recoil down a lot. It's got three ports in it. It's got little three little offset holes because these guns want to take the path of least resistance. Gotcha. That's going to be up to the right. It's pretty clear Taryn knows a thing or two about setting up a rifle for success. Then on the side here, this is the RMR Trigicon, the BCM forearm, the gas block from PRI. While I'm here, I'm a human sponge soaking up as much info as my brain allows me. If you take this hand and just move it one level down and get these fingers kind of around the front more, okay. a little more torque on that, the double tap hits us get a little closer That's together. Good. Okay. Since reviewing the Glock 43, I've become completely enamored by the little guy. It's perfect for a die-hard urbanite like me. 
But as good as the gun is stock, I was still impressed with the improvements Taryn was able to make to the gun. I just do what I think they need. Good sights, uh, trigger, grip job. Go ahead and see how it feels. They seem small, but in hand, they make a big difference. So I'll pop that in, and I'll give you one more in the magazine. Go ahead and rack one in the chamber. Still to this day, my Glock 26 is my go-to carry gun. Right in the eyeball. I'm going to have you run a little course this time. And as you can see, I shoot it pretty well considering its size. The Glock 34 and 24 are very competition-oriented guns. Granted, I know a couple of people who can still carry the Glock 34, and I would argue that's a talent in itself. The 24 was incredible. It felt just short of feeling like overkill, but it really was like shooting a rifle in pistol format. I mentioned before that for its incredibly anti-gun reputation, Cali has a massive shooting community. Hollywood is no exception. Taryn does his fair share of shooting with various actors and major players on the Hollywood scene. The very beginning of me doing any celebrities or whatever was in uh, 1997, Titanic had just come out, and a friend of mine, John Richling, he's like, hey, I'm gonna bring a director out there. I'm like, when, two weeks, I go, who? James Cameron, I'm like, no way, James Cameron's coming to my range. He rolls up, and so at one point, he wants to know all the details. So like on this gun, he's like, why is that barrel gold? I go, well, that's like a ion bondage, titanium nitrate, okay. Why is, uh, what's up with that hammer? Why is it this, that, uh, well, that's unobtainium in there. It's a thing from infinity. It's just cool. 2008 comes along. I'm watching Avatar, in, you know, in 3D. It's the raging movie of all time. So I'm like, I got to call him. I run out of the theater. And he answers. I'm like, Jim, he's like, Taryn? I, go, I just saw Avatar was raging. He's like, you liked it? You liked the, you liked the revolver in the movie? Yeah, that cool revolver that, that he shot uh, Sigourney Weaver with his bitch. And you like my guns? Pretty state of the art. I go, totally state of the art. What's up with the unobtainium? Unobtainium, I stole it from infinity. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt, Taryn has a pretty unique insight into not only the gun culture in Cali, but in general. As a three-gun competitor, Taryn has a less morbid appreciation for guns that is admittedly on the softer, easily digestible side of the message, but is no less important. To me, three-gun is like a video game come to life. Um, what's the most popular media in the world is, is video games. Yeah. Even people that hate guns are sitting there, so they're not even playing three-gun, they're playing ten-gun. Just you know, <laughs> blowing everything up and shredding stuff. Yeah. And we're just doing it in real life. We're not killing anybody. We're just having fun shooting cardboard targets, knocking over steel. Just because it's real life doesn't mean it's bad. We know you can't ban all the guns and it's going to stop everything. It's like banning all the cars. It's like, it doesn't work that way. But if you just treat the guns right and, and shoot, you know, have fun and be safe, you know, it's, it's fun stuff. All right, shooter ready. Stand by. Next week on Noir. I go back to my hometown, Houston, Texas, to visit the shop that opened its doors to me when I was just getting into shooting. And Lasort and I also get some trigger time in with three-gun competitive shooter, James Darby. <laughs>